Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. In today's video, I'm going to be doing a review and demo on the new L'Oreal Infallible Total Cover Foundation. So I picked up 304 and 305 on Amazon when they first came out and I realized after using of it after using it a couple of times that it, the color just wasn't working for me and I think that's why I wasn't liking it. So I actually happened to be at Walgreens and I picked up 309, 305, 304, 309. So first off, I wanted to read you guys off the description of this foundation, the details, what it claims to do. On Ulta.com it says you could get up to 24 hours of full coverage with a lightweight feel and a natural finish. Blends instantly to cover dark spots, blemishes, scars, and hyperpigmentation for a flawless complexion. The foundation is formulated with high load pigments for full coverage and enriched with aloe gel. The formula glides on and feels fresh all day. It will create the perfect canvas for flawless makeup application. And then the three top claims is um, it's a weightless feel, 24 hour total coverage, and new pro look of long wear. First, to give you guys my full thoughts on this foundation, I, with this foundation, testing it out, I've been using it for about two and a half weeks now, and I noticed that I have to use a primer with this foundation. I have oily combination skin, so in some parts of my face I can get really dry, and in others, like my T-zone, I get super oily. With this foundation, I noticed I have to use a primer with this foundation. When I did not use a primer, I was extremely, extremely oily, which I just looked like a grease ball. So for sure, a primer is needed. The one that I use in the demo is a is the Hard Candy Primer. I love that one. It works awesome with this foundation. Now, right off the bat, I would recommend this to people who have oily to normal skin. If you have dry skin, you're really not going to like this foundation. The last week that I used it, I kind of had some allergic reaction on my skin and my face was just extremely dry. When I used this foundation, it clung to every single dry part on my skin and it just did not look good. It emphasized texture and dryness and just picked it up everywhere. I remember one day when I used it, I actually used it in my magenta hot pink tutorial. So far it looked great, but looking up closely, if I still have a clip of it, I will include it right here. But you could just see all the texture that it had like around my smile lines and my chin and just a dryness that it really emphasized. I would not recommend it to anyone if you have dry skin or if you have a lot of texture because it will cling to those areas. But I do need to set this foundation. I don't like the way it looks with like a foundation powder. I like the way it does look with like the RCMA No Color Powder. I've used this with it and I love it. it. The more powder you put on, I notice on top of this foundation, it just tends to look cakey. So definitely would not recommend that, but a nice, very thin translucent powder is perfect for it because I notice that if you don't set this foundation and then you go straight in with like a bronzer or a blush or whatever, I feel like it almost doesn't blend as nicely. Which brings me into my next point. I, I would recommend working on one part of your face at a time so I wouldn't jump from here to here to there. Definitely work in one area at a time and you don't need to blend super fast but you want to make sure that you're blending evenly and that you're applying it evenly. Because I noticed with using this foundation that sometimes I will notice that it's splotchy right here and I could see where it's kind of drying to more of that natural matte finish. So if you're not careful with how you apply it and blend it, you can almost see like, oh my gosh, I forgot to put foundation in this one little spot. You will be able to see that. So definitely, you've been warned, be careful with that because with this foundation, I've noticed when I'm in a rush, I'm like, oh my gosh, how did I forget to put foundation right here? And I'll just have like a blank spot on my face. So be careful with that. So with this foundation, even though I recommend it for those with oily to normal skin, I still find that I have to touch up my makeup. Right now, my makeup is fresh, so it's still looking very matte and natural, and I like it. But I know within probably like four or five hours, I will have to touch up, which is not anything like new for me because I have oily skin, so I'm used to touching up or blotting my face. So yeah, you definitely will need to touch up. It's not like this foundation is never gonna make you get oily. Also, I noticed that sometimes when I hit the 10 or 12 hour mark of wearing this foundation, I am just extremely oily, like super oily. Sometimes more oily than I've used my other foundation. So 
definitely with this foundation you're gonna have to keep blotting sheets with you or a powder to really blot your skin that is probably going to work best for you so the coverage of this foundation is very buildable as you guys can see I'm building up this uh, foundation in the area of my face where I kind of wanted more coverage now would I say that this foundation can really cover up hyperpigmentation or tattoos no I don't think it can do that because even though I build it up twice, even right now I could still see my scarring peeking through, which is not a huge deal to me, but some days when I'm going, when it's like a special event, I just want my skin to look flawless and I don't want you to be able to see any scarring that I might have. So I definitely think this foundation can be medium to full coverage. It is buildable but I don't think it could cover tattoos. So as I was talking about the week that I had my dry, super textured skin, I noticed that when I exfoliated my skin that day and then I went back again to use my L'Oreal foundation, that my face looked so much better. So if you do wanna try out this foundation, but you feel like you have some texture or maybe some dryness, Try exfoliating your face first and then putting on this foundation because I noticed that I liked it so much better after my face was exfoliated. As you guys can see, it definitely has a more thick mousse consistency and it definitely is a lot thicker, but it doesn't feel heavy or cakey on the face. Like right now, it just feels like my face. It doesn't look cakey, it doesn't feel cakey, um, or it doesn't even look heavy. It just kind of really sits in the skin really nicely which is something that I really like even though it has a thicker texture because the Kat Von D foundation also has a super thick texture as well and that one my face feels like it cannot breathe. This foundation still makes my skin feel weightless and still breathable. Another tip that I wanted to mention if you guys are wanting to try out this foundation is don't trust the color of the tube to pick out your color. So um, the color on the inside is definitely way more different than it is on the outside. I will just show you guys an example of this. The tube of this foundation is definitely a lot darker than what is on the inside. And I definitely feel like with this, um, with this foundation, you might have to mix a few colors to find your perfect color. In order for me to find my perfect shade, I realized that I had to really mix two colors to get my perfect one because 305, the lightness of it was good, but it was just a little bit too ashy, so I really had to mix in some 309 to really warm it up, get some, of, get some more warmth on my skin, and it made this foundation so much better. This is what I mixed today and this combo worked really great for me. So enough about the foundation. I want to talk to you guys next about the sponge. This is probably, if I had to pick the foundation or the sponge, I would probably have to say the sponge. You guys can see it's super squishy. I love, love this sponge. This is probably, I know there are so many like sponge dupes out there almost for the beauty blender. This honestly has got to be the best one that I've tried. I sent a screenshot of it to my sister because I was like, you need to Amazon Prime this right now because it's just awesome. One of the best beauty sponges that I've tried besides a beauty blender. If you don't want to spend 20 bucks on a sponge, I highly recommend this. I used it for the bottom for foundation. I, this tip right here is perfect for blending in your concealer. As you guys can see, I used it for baking. It was wonderful. I love it. I've used it so many times and I just haven't even used my beauty blender because this to me honestly works just as good and it's $8. It really grows huge in size once you wet it. I love using it wet. It's definitely something I would recommend for you guys to pick up. I absolutely love it. I thought it fit perfect underneath my eye to bake, to blend in your foundation all over. I have nothing bad to say about this sponge. I really hope you guys enjoyed today's review and demo. I hope this video was as helpful as possible for you guys. If you guys have tried this foundation, let me know what you guys think about it in the comments down below. I would love to know your thoughts on it. I really appreciate you guys watching. Thank you so much. Don't forget to give this video a thumbs up and subscribe. And I will talk to you guys all in my next one. Bye.